welcome to another tutorial. This one is on applying decals, which I presented at the Railway Modelers Meet of BC in May 2021. If you are looking for tips on how to apply decals to your models, this tutorial is for you. Let's begin with a brief introduction to water slide decals for model railway use. These decals are images printed within a clear film and bonded to a paper backing sheet. This contains an adhesive and release layer, as you see in the diagram here. The layer gives the decal the ability to slide off the paper and onto the model when it is immersed in water for a few seconds. These decals are thinner than many other graphic application methods, and they can be printed to a very high level of detail. As such, they are popular for scale modeling. Until recently, water slide decals were professionally printed and available only in supplied designs. But with the advent of printable decal paper for color inkjet and laser printers, custom decals can now be produced by the hobbyist or small business. Screen printed decals are offered to the model railway hobby from several manufacturers. Microscale Industries is probably the best known manufacturer in this field. This type of printing provides full control over color rendering, including white, and facilitates the printing of complex multicolor graphics, such as corporate heralds. It also allows the manufacturer to print the decals within a clear decal film, which is not significantly larger than the image itself. This reduces the amount of excess decal film to be applied to the model. Inkjet or laser printed decals are now available from several different manufacturers, and they also sell paper for hobbyists to print their own decals at home. This type of printing has evolved to a level where white lettering and multicolor decals are now possible, and this has greatly benefited the custom decal hobby. With these types of decals, the decal film typically extends across the entire sheet. This means that the modeler needs to cut out the decal and then trim away excess decal film. The use of water slide decals for model railway hobbyists falls into two general categories. Decals can be used in scenic applications for structures, signs, and roads. For prototype modelers, these decals may assist us in suggesting a time and place for our layout. For example, applications such as advertisements on the sides of buildings or road signs can indicate whether a scene is set in the 1950s or in the 1970s, or whether it is set in Canada or the United States. The most common use of water slide decals for model railway hobbyists is the completion of custom painted locomotives and rolling stock. Decals for these typically comprise road numbers, railway name, company herald, dimensional data, and other graphics. The ability to decorate locomotives and rolling stock for a particular railway is a key component of prototype railway modeling. Several companies offer model railway decals, and I've listed a few of them here, along with their websites. Before we begin applying decals, some prep work on the model has to be undertaken. If we are applying decals to a locomotive or a piece of rolling stock, this is typically preceded by custom painting. If the model is not undecorated, the existing lettering will need to be removed so it doesn't show through the new paint. Some modelers also elect to remove the existing paint. Now the lettering on proprietary models is usually pad printed. It can be removed by applying isopropyl alcohol with a Q-tip or perhaps a stronger solvent. Occasionally it is desirable to renumber a locomotive or a freight car without repainting the model. The procedure for renumbering without repainting would be as follows. Firstly, we would remove the existing number with alcohol and a swab. We would use a small amount and work slowly so that we don't damage the paint underneath. As soon as the lettering is off, then the remaining alcohol should also be removed. The second step is to apply some gloss coat to the area and then apply the replacement decals. They can be blended in with a semi-gloss or flat coat and then some weathering. Now, if we're going to paint a model, the surface needs to be prepared, so it needs to be clean. We don't want any crazing or roughness in the paint when the decals go on. The most important step in preparing a model for decals is the application of a strong gloss coat on top of the paint to give it a nice smooth surface. We want to be able to slide our decals across the paint surface and maneuver them into the correct position and alignment, and we want excess fluids to bead up and evaporate off of the model. 
These are some of the tools I use when applying decals. I have a shallow container for water in which to immerse the decals, a small flashlight for illuminating white lettering, scissors for cutting out decals from the sheet, an X-Acto knife with a new number 11 blade for trimming the decals, a pair of tweezers for handling the decals, and some brushes for applying fluids and also maneuvering the decals on the model. And for the supplies, I use try to use clean water. Sometimes I'll distill it and I usually use warm water. A paper towel for blotting the decals after they've gone into the water. Spare number 11 blades for trimming the decals. This work is much easier if the blades are nice and sharp. And then we have our decal solutions, Microset, Microsol, and Solvacet. For commencing a decal project, we also want to do some research. It's helpful to review photographs of the prototype and familiarize yourself with what lettering is required and where it goes on the model. This photograph shows a typical box car from the 1970s, and we can see end reporting marks, we can see side reporting marks and dimensional data, the railway's logogram, and some other symbols on the car. And this is a car from the same series, but the other side. And there are a few differences. We see left and right stenciled on the sides of the car. And we also see a no running board caution sign at the tall ladder, which would only appear on one side of the car. I like to test fit the decals prior to application, either with a photocopy of commercial decals or printouts on paper if they are custom decals. If I'm working with a custom decal supplier, this is often done during the development process to confirm sizing and make sure that the decals will fit the model nicely. So we can now get started on preparing and applying decals for a model. When cutting out large decals from a sheet, we can use scissors. These are particularly useful in achieving nice straight lines when cutting out long stripes. But if we're cutting out smaller decals, or decals which happen to be close together on the sheet, then you will wish to use an X-Acto knife with a new number 11 blade. We are very often applying white lettering, and this can be difficult to see against the light blue backing sheet, which is typical of most decal sets. I use a small flashlight shining across the sheet to illuminate the lettering, and then I can see the lettering very clearly when I'm cutting out the decals. Once the decal has been cut out, it will need to be trimmed. An X-Acto knife with a new blade again is essential for this work. And when trimming the decals, I angle the blade to undercut the decal, which gives me a nice thin edge around the decal. This is the decal for the 40 inch dogwood logogram that's going to go on the side of the boxcar. It has been cut out from the decal sheet uh, with a fair amount of room around the decal. I'm now going to trim it as close as I can to the actual image so that when the decal goes on the car we have a minimal amount of decal film around the uh, actual image. So when I do this I want to hold my knife blade at an angle whereby I am undercutting the decal. This allows for a thinner image, sorry a thinner edge which is easier to hide. So I'm just holding that knife blade at an angle and making my cuts so that it cuts to some degree underneath the actual image. I'm using a new exacto knife blade for this. It needs to be very sharp. You don't want any issues with the blade trying to cut through the decal film. And usually with these pieces on the corners I can usually pull them off if it doesn't cut all the way through. We've got a big piece of paper on the end here so I'm going to come now right up to the actual dogwood. Angle my knife blade. When I make these longer cuts I'm actually pulling the knife blade across the paper which helps with a nice fine cut. 
And then now we've got a cut that's actually going to be longer than my knife blade. So I need to hold the decal steady. I'm going to use a flashlight to help light up the actual white lettering. I can see it better. I'm going to take as much time as I need to position the uh, knife blade. And then I'm just going to draw it very slowly in a nice straight line while pushing down and also angling the knife blade. If we get, we don't get all the way through here because we are undercutting. So what I can do now is come in behind the decal paper and just give that a nice little slice. And we can get rid of that without harming the decal. There it goes. Now we have to do the one on the other side, on the bottom. So again, I'm holding the decal as lightly as I can, but yet firmly enough that it's not going to wander around on me. Bring the knife blade into position, angle it back for the undercut, and then just draw it across in a nice straight line. And then fold that back. And then we'll just do a little slice in behind to get rid of that. Um, with this round dogwood on the corner, there's the, on the end, there's actually I can actually take off the corners here. So I'm just going to come in and take a 45 degree cut there. And take those corners off like so. And we now have a decal that is trimmed quite closely to the actual image and is ready for application on the model. We now come to the soaking of the decals. I immerse them in a shallow container of water to release it from the backing paper. Screen printed decals may require up to a minute of release time. Inkjet or laser printed decals may require only a few seconds. So you need to test the decals when you start working with them to see what the release time might be. Use tweezers to handle the decals. After removing the decal from the water, the excess water must be removed from the decal. I use a paper towel to blot the decal and remove the excess water. Our decal is now ready for application on the model. I have my water all ready to go, my micro set solution, the car on which the decal is to be applied, and I'm doing two cars and I'm using the other one on which the decal has already gone on as a reference for the location so I remind myself exactly where it needs to go. So we're going to take this decal that has been trimmed and we're going to place it in our water and we're going to let it soak for a few seconds. These are custom decals. They have a quicker release time than some commercial decals. Microscale decals take a little longer to release. Uh, these ones don't take very much time at all. But this is a larger decal in comparison and I'm going to give it a little bit more time because I don't want any issues with it coming off the uh, carrier sheet. Once it comes out of the water we're going to blot it on the paper towel and then we're going to get ready to apply it on the model. I can actually test it a little bit just to see if it's going to move for us. It needs a little bit longer. Okay, now it's moving. So we're going to take it out of the water. I'm going to put the decal up on its edge and that will help to suck some of the water off of it. The edge of the paper towel is also good for this purpose. So this decal is now ready to go onto the model. Before applying a decal to the model, I apply MicroSet setting solution to the area where the decal will be applied. 
This solution will soften the deco and activate the adhesion layer. I use a dedicated brush for this purpose. It's best to use tweezers to transfer the deco, which is still on its backing paper to the model. Use a dedicated brush to gently slide the deco from its backing sheet onto the model. Once the deco has been successfully transferred, the backing sheet can then be removed and taken away. The same brush is used to maneuver the deco into final position. If it doesn't move easily, you can apply more fluid or you can use the end of a knife blade to move the deco. A brush is used to remove excess fluid beneath large decals. Work from the middle of the decal to the outer edges. I also brush along rivet strips or weld lines to improve adhesion. I then use a different brush to apply the final setting solution. This could be Microscale's Microsol or Walther's Solvacet. Apply the fluid sparingly and then leave it to do its work. During this process, the decal will soften and possibly wrinkle. It is important to leave it alone and let the fluid do its work and the decal will eventually settle onto the model nicely. We're now ready to put the decal on the model. So I'm going to take the uh, decal in my tweezers. Actually before I do that I'm going to take my micro set solution and I'm going to apply a film of solution to the location where the decal will go. This will help to soften the decal and help help it to get over the weld lines that are on the side of the car. We're then going to take the decal and place it on the model and then we're going to transfer it onto the model. So I just push down gently with a brush, skid it off and once it's, there's enough of it off I just pull the paper away get rid of it. With a larger decal like this it's going to need more fluid in order for you to be able to move it otherwise it's going to grab onto the model and it's not going to want to go anywhere. The best way to move a decal if it's reluctant to move is with the tip of a X-Acto knife blade and it just takes a little bit to get it going and I can just tug it into location. I want the uh, center of the dogwood on that weld line and I want the British Columbia Railway to be just above this ladder rung so right now we're a little high so we're going to try and bring it down so it's not moving with a brush so I'm going to give it some more fluid And then we're going to start working it down to its desired location. Once we've got it kind of where we think we'd like to have it, I now need to check to see if it is level on the side of the car. This is strictly by eye. It's just a question of what the eye perceives to be correct. As a reference point, I've got a nice straight line at the top of the car here that I can use. Once I've got it aligned, I'm going to let it sit just for a couple of seconds, just to let it to start to grab the model. And this is the, when this is so when I start brushing the decal to remove the excess water and fluid, that it does not want to skid around on me. Otherwise, I've got to go back and correct the location. So we're aligned on that weld line. We're aligned in relation to that ladder rung. We're ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is take a smaller brush, which is less likely to move the decal. Very gently we're just going to move the brush across the decal and we're going to get rid of that water and fluid that is underneath the decal. As you push lightly on the decal, all of that water underneath and fluid underneath starts to come out. I don't know if the video will pick that up or not, but it is happening. And as we do that, the model will start the decal will start to increase its adhesion on the model. And at that stage there is less risk of the decal moving around on us. So 
So I'm gradually working my way around the decal. I'm always brushing to the outside of the decal to remove the fluid. I'm also looking out for any potential bubbles underneath which need to be massaged out. I'm now in the position where I can push a little harder with the brush to make that happen. There are one, two, three, four weld lines, slightly raised weld lines that are underneath this decal. So I'm now going to take my brush and I'm just going to run up and down those weld lines just to help the decal to adhere on either side of that weld line. And you can actually see this happening. It probably won't be picked up on the video, but I can see that weld line starting to appear through the decal, which is exactly what I want. And then I'm just going around for any residual liquid that is still under the decal. That's starting to look pretty good. My alignment is still good. If at this stage there was an alignment issue, I could go back with fluid, soften up the decal, break the adhesion and make some minor adjustments in location, but prefer not to do that if I don't have to. By slightly angling the uh, model in the light, I can see where there might still be some issues with respect to fluid underneath. I'm not really seeing any. This wild line could come through a little better, so I'm just going to push a little harder with the brush. There we go. Now we're going to let those cars sit for a little while. This one was just done a few minutes previously. Uh, we're going to uh, close up our micro set and uh, now we're going to use Walther's Solva set. Um, Micro offers a product called Microsol, which uh, is sort of their finishing product. Product. It is not as strong as Solvacet, but it's quite quite good. I just prefer to use Solvacet because it's uh, a really good, really good product. And what this does is this will soften the decal further and allow it to really snuggle down onto the model, especially over those weld lines. And um, the trick here is that when you first put it on, uh, it's going to look like the decal is sort of wrinkling up on you and so on, and you're going to be tempted to go in there and smooth it out with a brush. Uh, mustn't do that. You need to let the decal do its job, let the solution do its job, and then when you come back a few minutes later, it will look absolutely terrific. So we're going to take our, micro our solver set. And I don't use the applicator, I use a brush, that, uh, just a fine artist brush. And um, we're going to go in here and get some fluid. And then I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to flood it. I'm just going to put enough on for the fluid to do its job. So we're just going to do that. And then this is where you just want to leave it alone and let it do its thing. Same thing with the second car. If I was doing this for smaller decals, I would use a minimal amount of this. You don't need a lot. Okay, so we're now going to let that do its trick, and that completes the application of the Dogwood logograms on these cars. It is often necessary to apply decals over rivet strips, weld seams, or even over ribs. While Solvacet will help with this, there are some additional techniques which can be employed, including additional softening during application, applying decals in sequence, or cutting and pasting. I'll look closer at these techniques a little later on in this presentation. After the decals have been applied and allowed to set, any fluid or water stains can be removed with alcohol on a Q-tip. 
The model should then receive a final seal coat to protect the decals, and several manufacturers offer solutions for this purpose. I like to use a mix of gloss and flat to produce a semi-gloss final seal coat. And the final result can be some models which have been custom painted and custom decaled and are unique. One of the most rewarding aspects of the hobby is completing a custom painted and decal piece of equipment and putting it into service on your layout. So I encourage you to give it a try. Let's now look at some finished examples. These are models which have received decals. This N-scale locomotive has been finished with a microscale industry set of screen printed decals, including the cab numbers, CN logograms, frame stripes, classification lights, and ACI label. This N-scale locomotive has been finished with a mix of microscale and custom decals, including the microscale lightning stripe and lumber boards and custom cab logos and numbers. These passenger coaches were finished with custom inkjet printed decals. For many years, the only way to letter Canadian freight cars was with dry transfers. These were available from a company called CDS. These two cars were finished with CDS dry transfers, which were burnished onto the model with a pencil. These tank cars were finished with mainline decals, screen printed decals for the car bodies and microscale decals for the safety placards. This freight car was finished with a selection of microscale industries screen printed decals. There was no set for these specific cars, so all the decals on this model were obtained from sets for other cars. This rotary gondola was finished with custom inkjet printed decals. The Procore logogram in the middle of the car came without the white background, so I used white decal trim film to create the white background, and then the logo went on top of that. This woodchip car was finished with custom inkjet printed decals. The decal for the PGE map logogram, over to the right, was applied over the rib using additional softening and sequential application. What I mean by this is that I focused on getting the portion of the decal onto the rib first, and then I moved on to the other portions of the decal and applied those. And in this sequence, it formed a nice tight seal around the rib. These hoppers were finished with custom inkjet printed decals. Now the decal for PGE was cut to fit around the stiffener below the top cord, and a second piece was then applied over top. So we're talking about the G in PGE, and you can see that it actually wraps around one of those angled stiffeners there. So I cut out a slot for the letter to go down, and then I put another piece over top to complete the G. This tank car was finished with custom decals, which were printed on a home laser printer. If your decals are black, this is actually quite easy to do. And an advantage of this method is that you can produce decals very easily for models which are never going to see decals produced for them. This unique piece of work equipment was also finished with custom inkjet and laser printed decals. There are occasions where you may need to apply decals prior to final assembly. This model of a Jordan spreader required that the decals went on the side of the cab before the rest of the parts went on the model. Here we see some N-scale vehicles, which have been finished with Microscale Industries decals, including the uh, logograms on the doors and also the license plates. And these N-scale pickup trucks have Microscale decals for the license plates and custom decals for the door logos and also the numbers of the trucks. This tractor and trailer was finished with custom inkjet printed decals. Now the decal on the rear door was cut and segmented to give the appearance of being behind the door rods, which are molded onto the model. If the decal had gone over the door rods, it would not have looked as good. And this end scale tractor and trailer were finished with custom inkjet printed decals that have a metallic finish. Microscale decals were used for the rear lights and the side reflectors. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial on dealing with decals and that it might assist you in creating better looking models for your railway. 
If it has, I invite you to like and subscribe to this channel. I hope to upload additional tutorials on model railway topics in the near future. Until then, thank you for watching and see you again soon. Thank you.